So, team keep it clean. Today, I don't know why, but I've just been in a really, 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 really great mood. And I just want to say that I appreciate y'all for everything that y'all do to contribute to the positivity, not only on the channel, but in, in my own personal life. Uh, just coming on here, just reading the comments and just seeing the support from all of y'all, it, it means a lot. And, and it does not ever go unnoticed. So, I appreciate y'all more than you realize. And, and I don't say thank you to y'all enough. Now, um, something, this article that I was reading, uh, actually last week, uh, and I wanted to talk about it last week, and I don't know what happened, but it came to my mind today. And it, 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 it tried to kill the vibe, but we ain't going to let it kill the vibe. But this was an article from NFL Insider Matt Lombardo, and it's titled NFL Players Potentially on the Trade Block Ahead of the Trade Deadline. So uh, it went through some different teams and some different players. It talked about Ryan Tannehill. Uh, it talked about uh, Eagles' Derek Barnett. It talked about running back Michael Carter from the Jets, Buda Baker from the Cardinals, Devontae Adams from the Raiders, Jonathan Taylor from the Colts, but then it talked about our guy PQ. And Patrick Queen, we know going into this offseason was a big one. Um, actually, even last season, when they first declined his fifth-year option, I was like, ooh, yikes. And then when they traded for Roquan Smith, I was like, ooh, yikes. Uh, and then then, like I didn't even think he would be here right now when they traded for Roquan Smith I was like oh yeah this is gonna be a wrap after this season this offseason they're probably gonna trade Patrick Queen for some draft picks or whatnot and that's gonna be it because they're not gonna let him go into the last year of his deal and just let him walk as a free agent not especially if they don't plan on resigning him but they kept him and I was glad that they kept him because I had always wanted them to keep him because my preference, it was the same way I felt about Hayden Hurst, the same way I felt about Orlando Brown Jr., the same way I felt about Hollywood Brown. Even if the Baltimore Ravens didn't plan on or intend on re-signing those players, me, the way that I think, and I know I'm not a GM, but I wanted those players to ride out their contracts because I felt like they were good players for the Baltimore Ravens and they were contributors for the Baltimore Ravens. So I wanted them to stay as long as they possibly could. Now, the Baltimore Ravens, of course, had other plans uh, and they made those other plans. But with, um, with Patrick Queen, I feel the same way. I feel the same way. But Eric DaCosta, he said something significant uh, about Patrick Queen. And he said that, oh, we want to re-sign Patrick Queen. We want to sign him to a contract extension. And initially, when I heard that he said that, I was thinking, mm, yeah, he's just talking. He's just talking. But then it came out that they had actually had conversations with Patrick Queen about a contract extension. I was like, oh, okay, well, hold up now. That, that's something. And, and even though it's just conversations, you got to start somewhere. But then it took it a step further because I was thinking, man, if they're having conversations about Patrick Queen, because if, if they really didn't want to re-sign somebody, they would not waste their time they, you don't need to have conversations just to motivate somebody that can be a form of motivation but you don't need to have a conversation just to be like all right we're going to talk to this guy just so i can give him some extra motivation but we don't have no plans on resigning him no it will be a complete waste of time and if that's what you need to get motivated because patrick queen he's gonna get paid either way whether, whether it's from the ravens or not but if it's if a conversation about the money is what it takes for you to get motivated then nah you you gotta look for motivation somewhere else uh because with patrick queen a conversation don't really do nothing a contract would and, and that action would, and, and he'd been showing that action on the field because Patrick Queen, especially this season, he'd been balling out, man. He'd been balling out. We talked about it during the game this past Sunday against the Browns with Patrick Queen is that every single game, man, every single game this year, and it's only been four so far, but with every game, Patrick Queen's price is going up. It's going up more, more and more because Patrick Queen continues to make play after play after play. He's making a lot of nice open field tackles. He's been balling. And of course, Roquan Smith, hey, he's been balling too. But Patrick Queen, I'm sure he is very hungry right now because with Patrick Queen, he's looking like, hold up, bro, this, this dude, he get, this dude right next to me get paid 20 million a year. And he's nice. Roquan Smith is nice. But Patrick Queen has also been nice too. And you know what? We talking so much about Patrick Queen, we didn't even talk about the article. Let's read what the article had to say. It says, Baltimore's five-year and $100 million commitment to Roquan Smith and Smith starting the season at a dominant level could make Patrick Queen expendable as the deadline nears. And that is something that I just would not like at all. I understand it. I get the business part of it, but I still don't like it because I want Patrick Queen to ride this out. Now, I have seen a lot of Ravens fans change their tune on Patrick Queen because the initial thought was like, all right, they pay Roquan Smith. Uh, they're not going to pay two linebackers big money. But I've seen a lot of Ravens fans recently say, hey, pay Patrick Queen. Keep him on the team. Don't let him go nowhere. Ravens, buck the trend. St change it up. Pay two linebackers because we don't want to break up this duo. And I can see why. It'll be tough. 
but I can see why people feel that way because Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith have been amazing together. But let's keep reading uh, the article. It says the Ravens decline in Queen's fifth year option and could shop him at the deadline, especially to defenses who view the 24 year old as a missing piece. A versatile linebacker with a solid nose for the football, Queen has 11 career sacks. Now this number needs to be updated uh, and has started off the 2023 campaign with 31 total tackles, one for a loss and one sack. So um, that is a real possibility, but I hope that Eric DaCosta reads this article and gets it off his phone immediately. I can't say throw it in the trash because he ain't reading a paper article. But anyway, I hope Eric DaCosta does not trade Patrick Queen at all because it, the way that I feel, why make a strength weaker? Even if worst case scenario, if you can't come to terms with Patrick Queen and he ends up leaving and you get a third round pick in 2025, okay, so be it. But I like, no, man, like I, I do not want them to trade him this season at all because that's a big strength for the Baltimore Ravens, right? That's a huge strength right now. Roquan Smith and P Patrick Queen playing alongside each other, them just really commending each other, them feeding off of each other, them complimenting each other. You, you do not want to try to fix what's not broken. And again, we get the, the business side of it, like we talked about earlier with Hayden Hurst and with Orlando Brown Jr., Mark Hollywood Brown, and there's been other people too, to where the Ravens, they, they will trade them before their contract expires so they can get something rather than just a third round comp pick or a possible third round comp pick, depending on the type of, of contract that they would have received. But still, man, with Patrick Queen, that's a risk that you take. You have to take that risk because you're going to plug somebody else up in there. And it's no offense to the other guys, anything like that. But Malik Harrison, he, he's been holding it down like sort of as an edge defender. I know he stepped in a lot last week and he was doing this thing. So shout out to Malik Harrison. Um, you also have Trenton Simpson. And it's been a mystery with Trenton Simpson because we've seen him here and there on special teams and whatnot. But I've just been wondering, like, where's Trenton Simpson? And I get he's a rookie. He's a third round pick. But with Tyus Bowser being out uh, and with the Baltimore Ravens just loving to play the defense the way that they love to play, I would have thought that Trent Simpson would be a, a bigger part of what they do, especially with David Ajabo being out, with Adafi Away being out. I would have thought they would have might have had him in the mix just a little bit, just a little bit um, to just help spell some of the linebackers and whatnot, help give some people a break and a rest and some breathing time. Well, I don't think we've seen him at all. I don't recall seeing number 30 at all uh, out there with the defense. Special teams, yeah. But out on defense, I don't recall, unless I, unless I missed it. But Patrick Queen is just, right now, for the Baltimore Ravens, he is not replaceable. Right now. Now, if you went into the offseason and whatnot, you could do some things, work out some stuff. Or what, but right now, he is not somebody that you could be like, all right, you, go in there, plug and play. No, it's not like that. So for everything that he brings, use it. For everything that he does for the team, take advantage of it. For everything that he contributes to the Baltimore Ravens, you don't get rid of that. 